This is an Eye on Annapolis special update. Hey, joining us today on the phone is a guy that we happen to have a love-hate relationship with. It's the tax man, Maryland's comptroller, Peter Francho. And the comptroller has been with us several times, and it's feel like I almost owe you some sort of swag or a challenge coin or something. But uh, Peter Francho is a lawyer, and we're not going to hold it against you on that. Uh, elected to the House of Delegates in 87, represented the 20th District, which is Tacoma Park, Silver Spring area in Montgomery County. After 20 years, decided to run for comptroller against incumbent and very quirky former Governor William Donald Schaefer. Bounced him and former Anne Arundel County executive in the primary and went on to win the office handily and did it again in 2010 and 2014 and 2018 when he was the single largest vote getter in Maryland. And if my math is right, it was 1,620,264 votes. And even the governor did not fare that well. Welcome back. How are you? I'm fabulous, John. And thank you for that nice introduction. And, uh, Yes, I kid Governor Hogan from time to time that I had hundreds of thousands of more votes than he did. And he obviously is, uh, at least according to the recent poll, a very popular elected official. But I attribute my success as comptroller to the fact that we have the three R's in the agency. We respect all the taxpayers. We respond to all of the taxpayers. We try our level best to get at results for all of the taxpayers. And I think that's gotten through to the uh, body politic that whoever you are, whatever you think about this politics or that politics, uh, we're here to be of service. And uh, so I salute my own employees for that kind of customer service. And I appreciate the nice uh, introduction you gave. Well, you got, you have done one hell of a job in the last 13 plus years. So I think, um, you know, the accolades are certainly well-deserved for sure. Um, but today I, I want well, to... Well, no, you're normally a lot more sar- sarcastic, so I'm, I'm astonished that I got <laughs> that off as easily. Hey, wait, we're not quite done yet, though, okay? So give, give it a couple yeah. minutes here. <laughs> um, but today we're going to talk about some good and some bad, and I figure we can get the bad out of the way first because it's sort of at the top of everybody's mind, uh, despite the fact that there's a tropical storm coming. But <laughs> COVID, as the elephant in the room... And it's really put a whammy on everybody personally, mentally, emotionally, schools, everything else, and specifically the state. Um, And you are the fiscal, the fiscal man for the state. And where do we stand? I mean, is it, is it really as bad as it seems? It is uh, got a lot of negative economic consequences as well as the the negative health consequences. I tend to say how much I appreciate the, aggressive leadership of Governor Hogan and his team on the matter of public health and safety. I think that is just the number one priority uh, over and over and over again. And unfortunately, at the federal level, as everyone realizes, I think even the supporters of the current administration would have to admit, the country doesn't have a national plan for dealing with the virus. As a result, We have shut down lots of our parts of our economy, but we haven't gotten out ahead of the virus. So we're in this crazy situation of people uh, lobbying to reopen the economy while the virus is still out there uh, in full force. In contrast, the countries in Europe and Asia that got ahead of the virus controlled it and now are very successfully opening schools and opening their economies back up. We in the U.S. have just, we gave up, is what happened uh, months ago. And now we're in this situation where uh, we have to deal with a raging uh, epidemic at the same time as people are banging on the table saying, open up the schools and open up the economy. So it's a mess here. Thank you for letting me take the Band-Aid off the uh, wound uh, at the beginning. And I will try to emphasize positive developments down the road. But on a state level, I mean, how how dire is our state financial picture? And I know, I know that we talked about, you know, billions of dollars of shortfall in the current fiscal year, as well as projecting out into next year. How long do you anticipate before we, you know, get back on our feet? Or is that something that you can't really guess about right now just because of the virus? Well, I was trying to get in, into some positive news, but uh, since you asked, our small businesses are facing an apocalyptic experience. I mean, this is like the dinosaur extinction millions of years ago. 
And small businesses are just going permanently out of business, left and right, all over the state of Maryland. And amazingly, uh, last week I walked down Main Street in Annapolis, of all places, the last place I would think that would suffer uh, closures. And I saw more than a few uh, for lease signs up in uh, storefront windows. That really surprised me. It shouldn't. Uh, because we have the statistics that tens of thousands of small businesses no longer exist. I guess the effort right now is how can we save those that are still with us? And that's why I appreciate uh, any opportunity to uh, underline the upcoming tax-free shopping week. We call it back-to-school shopping tax-free. It really isn't just for school uh, purchases because very few of the public schools' kids are going back to school. But you know, kids need new shoes, they need new uh, clothes because they're growing, and uh, adults also benefit from a waiver of the 6% sales tax. So if there's any bright little light of uh, something that's good for people, uh, August 9th through August 15th is another iteration of uh, tax-free shopping in Maryland. And that, that basically is any item that's under $100 is tax-free? Correct, and you can buy an unlimited number of items. So families that historically have had, you know, a thousand dollars in back to school clothing expenses for their kids, you know, could save a significant amount of money. Sure. A with the waiver of the six percent sales tax, but also other discounts. This year, it's obviously a lot different, but I still think it's a way to give a shot in the arm to these wonderful small businesses that have been very loyal for decades to the state of Maryland. But many of them, uh, despite all everyone's best efforts, are going permanently uh, uh, out of business and losing wages and jobs, et cetera. I'm not suggesting we can stand in the way of that, but we can certainly inject some capital into them through this tax-free shopping week, and that is much appreciated by them. I will mention on on the uh, restaurant thing that I was so impressed with this website or Facebook page, which is driving uh, folks to Annapolis restaurants and hats off to uh, everyone that's involved in that. But I got the idea for these, for allowing mixed drinks to be delivered to people's homes by right. restaurants because my local uh, restaurant, Sierra Rojo in Tacoma Park, was complaining. They said, we're doing a lot of takeout, but that isn't where the margins are, as you mentioned. The margin is really in our margaritas. And uh, I said, well, I love you, margaritas. I like paying $14 for a margarita. So why don't we see if the governor will include that in emergency uh, authorization? And he did that, and it's still in effect, and it's helped a lot in a uh, slim margin business to provide a little bit of uh, uh, positive news for restaurants. But, well, well uh, without a, a, without a doubt, you are, you are such a fan of uh, the alcohol industry in Maryland. Uh, I mean, what you what you did for the uh, small tap rooms and the little microbreweries and everything else, as well as the push behind getting this takeout alcohol during this coronavirus is unbelievable. It's been just, it has been a huge help to, and I know several different restaurateurs here in Annapolis and they're like, you know, this, the story is no different from your margarita place. This was a lifesaver to be able to do that. And well, I've famously said that if I ever get to be governor and I'm lucky enough to lead the state, I'm going to be standing at the borders uh, for a while, handing out cold Maryland craft beer to people that visit our state, urging them to invest in our state, live in our state, profit in our state, bring their families up in our state. We need new people from around the country in addition to keeping the young people we already have. So why not? Uh, tout Maryland craft alcohol products. They're terrific. You know, I, t- I tell you, I heard I heard you talk about that and pr- make that promise on Scott McMullen's Annapolis podcast a little bit ago, and now you've said it twice. So now it's on the record. We're gonna we're gonna hold you to that. Being on the borders, handing out Maryland craft beers to to visitors as they yep. go, as they come into Maryland. But I'll tell you, you mentioned you're running for governor. Obviously, that is no secret. It probably hasn't been a secret to many people for probably six years or so, but officially it's been a little bit less than a year, I guess. Still far away. Do you have any idea of who might be your number two on the ticket? Uh, No, there are lots of people that would love to be. You know, in Maryland, we have this odd system of the lieutenant governor runs as a kind of a partner of the governor, not separately. But there are lots of talented people. And, uh, you know, we'll look at folks after the national election, probably uh, get that behind us and then move forward with uh, 
you know, the reality of running for governor, which is a big deal. Uh, it'll be different because of the uh, after effects of the coronavirus uh, epidemic. But I'm looking forward to it, partly because I uh, continue always to be an, a, an optimist. And I happen to think that Maryland's better days are ahead and that the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train coming toward us, but rather a real opportunity for us to reinvent ourselves as a state. So I'm excited about turning a lot of things that we have traditionally done in transportation and education and, uh, you know, the environment, turning some of those programs inside out and trying to get better results with less money. Fantastic. Well, do you have any idea on who might be able to fill your shoes in the comptroller's oh, office? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. There are probably going to be 20 people running for the seat because it's such a fun job now. <laughs> it's high visibility. It's got lots of, uh, you know, it's it's got lots of bells and whistles attached to it. And, uh, you know, I will have been controller 16 years, so I've done just about everything I can to improve it. We're putting in a brand new data system, which is going to benefit citizens in the state for decades to come. So, yeah, I anticipate a long list of uh, Democrats and Republicans who are going to be interested in trying to be the controller after me. 2019 tax year has just wrapped up and the deadline, which was graciously extended by the federal government as well as the state government to July 15th to file your state and federal taxes because of the whole COVID thing. How did you guys end up? I mean, do you have any numbers that go with? I know you guys are fantastic as far as turning around refunds. And this year, I must say, I found out you're more fantastic at getting money to Marylanders than cashing the checks from Marylanders. Now, I sent my check in on the 15th and it's still not cashed. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a bit of a problem. We put in new equipment so that we can scan those checks uh, directly into the bank from our offices here in Annapolis. We don't have to go down to the bank. But unfortunately, because of the uh, pandemic, it's interfered with people other than essential employees showing uh -huh. up. So we're, we're better off on the... Uh, you know, that, th those require some actual physical people being in the uh, agency, and we've kept that for their safety down to a minimum. But let me know uh, if you don't get it uh, tomorrow, because uh, I'll drive by and personally deliver it. Well, no, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a check I sent to you oh, for my yeah, taxes. Well, personally, I will personally cash your check. I won't look at, I won't look at the amount. I'll, uh, I'll just uh, make sure it gets in the bag promptly and... Yeah, that's been a bit of a problem. It used to be a big problem because the technology was not there. Uh, then we fixed that. But, yeah, this uh, pandemic has had some uh, complications for uh, our folks because they're working remotely. Well, it does. I, I Every time I look around, there's some other unintended consequence of this pandemic that nobody ever really seemed to think about, which is just frustrating on so many different levels. This year, you also, with your tax year, had a new initiative where you could sign up for health, not sign up for, but sign up to get information for the Maryland Health Exchange uh, for people that did not have insurance. And that was, you know, right through your tax return. You could say, hey, do you want to learn with information? And I think that was a really, I was talking with the Maryland Health Exchange and they said that was just incredibly successful. Yes. And uh, we're very proud of that partnership with them and uh, glad for the opportunity. It's a little bit uh, risky for a tax agency like ours to get involved in something like, uh, you know, the Obamacare, Medicaid type situation. But we agreed to go ahead and ask the question, do you have health care? And if they said no, then the question was, would you like to have someone contact you about free or affordable health care? And folks that checked yes, I think there were 50 or 60,000 of them uh, have been contacted and signed up. And that's good, A, for their health, it's good for the rest of us, and it's also relatively pain-free as far as the state's economy. Right. Well, I mean, again, this is something, I mean, it's not obviously your your purvey, but I mean, this is similar to the uh, voter motor, motor voter, voter motor thing, where the MVA is not necessarily a voter registration thing, but they do have contact with pretty much most Marylanders, and that's an ideal place to say, hey, do you want to register to vote? And this makes perfect sense to me. You in one way or another, have contact with every Marylander with your department that, hey, do you want to know more about health insurance? That's that's a no-brainer to me. Well, more importantly, it's the kind of innovative, entrepreneurial, experimental thing that you can test out at relatively almost no cost to the taxpayer. 
And if it proves to be successful, then you can continue it and even expand it a little bit in the years following. I, I love that ability of government to uh, test something first. And then uh, if it actually proves to be successful, scale it up. Right. The other thing is entrepreneurial that you guys have done, and I don't know whether other states do this, but I know that you make a huge deal about it uh, to the point of assuming different identities from year to year, but it's your unclaimed funds that you've got. And uh, you've got a lot of booty in some basement someplace, and uh, you, you try yeah. to give it back. Well, uh, all states have this because of federal it's cheat laws, they're called, and it basically requires corporations to to not hold on to money that they cannot uh, that they owe consumers, but have not been able to locate the consumer. So this could be uh, contents of a safe deposit box in a bank, or it could be a life insurance premium that uh, or payment that uh, someone passed away and didn't tell their relatives that they could collect on that. Anyway, after three years, these corporations and banks have to turn over the contents to the state of Maryland, as they do to states all around the country. Most states just spend it like we do. We send it to the uh, legislature immediately. They spend the money, but the debt is held in perpetuity. Most states do not advertise their liability and do not advertise that they owe this money to citizens. We are holding about a billion and a half dollars for a million Maryland accounts. And we actively and aggressively go out and market this. And, and we go to fairs when fairs were still allowed uh, pre-coronavirus and set up kiosks and set up computers. And we would let people know, uh, hey, we're holding, uh, <clears throat> even if it's just $50 or uh, in some instances, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think our largest account is three and a half million dollars that we're trying to wow. reunite with the rightful owner. So what, why is that important? It's important from the customer service perspective. A lot of people don't would never realize that the state was sitting on this money uh, if they were the rightful heir. We don't tell them what it is, John. We just say, hey, look, this person has a uh, account with us. We're holding money. So uh, if that person's no longer alive, their rightful heir should uh, get hold of us because it's their money, right. and we'd like to re we'd like to reunite you with your money. That's the concept, and uh, it's catching on. A lot of states are emulating us in our aggressive advocacy. Sounds like a little bit like Al Capone's vault. You know, don't know quite what's in it. And, you know, could be, yeah, could, could yeah, be five dollars well, or it could be half a million. That's uh, that's yeah, amazing. It, it, there have been some uh, really uh, unbelievable incidents where we have returned money that, uh, put it this way, that it produced a, quite a bit of friction on some couples who argued over who oh. forgot to tell who about the money that was in the safe deposit box. But oh, anyway, right. it all ends up nice. It all ends up fine. And uh, it's a great program. It's the Maryland Unclaimed Property. Folks should go to our website. There's a big icon there. You can look at all 1 million accounts on the Internet. Uh, they're all alphabetized. Once again, I, don't, I emphasize we don't say how much they are because we don't want people uh, trying to right. defraud us. So uh, right. now, it's just the name now, name, and the address. And, and all of this information that we're talking about today can be found on MarylandTaxes.com, just real simple website. And um, it, yeah, it's better. I think we just uh, redid our. I spoke about our data system, which has been completely upgraded and modernized, and is now much more user friendly as far as paying your taxes and finding out what your tax liabilities are. We also simultaneously redid our website, and I think we changed it from uh, MarylandTaxes.com to MarylandTaxes.gov. G O V. Not it's not it will still get to us if you do the com, but uh, the correct address is gov. And uh, yeah, people can go there, click on the uh, any number of different icons, benefit from a modernized uh, website that's much better than what was there before. What's the oddest thing that you've had in your vaults? Oh, we've we've still got, and you're welcome to come over. We have all sorts of things in there that are interesting as far as items that were primarily in safe deposit boxes. Uh, my favorite is we have several urns holding people's ashes, which sounds a little morbid, but why not uh, why not take care of those until uh, 
we can reunite them with the uh, yeah. real owner. My wow. favorite, uh, I mentioned that sometimes there's a little bit of friction. We had a press conference years ago where I returned $250,000 in uh, stocks that we had liquidated because they'd been turned over to us by the bank and uh, they were in someone's safe deposit box. So we sold them, gave the 250000 to the legislature to spend on whatever it was they were spending money on that year. But the debt, as I said, is there in perpetuity, and we identified the rather elderly couple that uh, and were entitled. It was their 250000 and we had a press conference because we thought it would promote interest in the website. And uh, right in front of the press and the TV cameras, this uh, couple got into a pretty spirited uh, conversation about who was to blame for forgetting that the deposit box had their stocks in it. And I had to break in and say, well, whoever was at fault, it doesn't really matter because we happened through no good smarts of our own necessarily. We happened to sell the stocks at the height of the market at that point. And so we were happy to deliver the 250000 because the market had gone down considerably, as I recall, by the time we had the press conference. So we were trying to mitigate our uh, friction sometimes with uh, a lot of money like this uh, creates what a but, fantastic story oh yeah no it was a it was a human nature story and uh having been chewed out by my wife on numerous occasions correctly for various things that i did wrong i enjoyed uh seeing uh the missus dressed down the mister for uh being so uh negligent with their money <laughs> yeah did did, yeah, did, did your awful. wife did your wife chew you out for running for governor uh, yeah, she, her, her exact quote is, are you crazy? Uh, and as you know, most politicians are slightly uh, unhinged. So, yeah, I guess I plead guilty. But she's fine. She, You know, it's the end of my career. I'm 72 now. I've been in politics 34 years. I actually know what I'm doing. I've got a vision as far as reinventing the state and making the state a welcoming state to folks around the country who can come and live and work and raise their families here and make money, open up businesses. Uh, I happen to think Maryland's got a unfair perception around the country as a high-tax state that's not friendly to small businesses. And, uh, you know, I think we can change that through good leadership. And, you know, I used to think of myself as a older uh, kind of uh, politician who's been around forever. But now I'm realizing that what people want is a government that is nimble and innovative and got some new ideas, but it's willing to test them out in a way that's not fiscally irresponsible and uh, really wants to take advantage of uh, the challenges of the pandemic to, you know, reimagine our state at the end of this and rebuild, reconstruct the state in a better way. So I'm pretty uh, psyched right now that this is a great opportunity for me and hopefully for the voters to put somebody in there that knows what they're doing, who's competent, who's going to be responsive to that, but most of all, change things for the better. I agree. And you've done it. And actually, as we start to wrap up, I mean, another kudos to you on the uh, podcast that your office, your department has put out uh, called Revenues. And I discovered it. It sounds really boring on the surface, but I've got to assure you that it's not. It's really a great way to communicate with the citizens of Maryland from the Comptroller's office. And you're not you're not hosting it. This is your staff that is doing it. And you've been on there, obviously. You've been a guest. But they talk about local small businesses statewide. They had I know you had DJ Kopeck on there at one point. And I discovered the Beer Me app through the Revenues podcast. Um, Excellent. I had never heard that. So they, they're doing a great job. And again, this, this sort of gives you an idea of how progressive the tax collector is in what they can do. Um, and if you're looking to subscribe to that podcast, it's Revenues Podcast, R-E-V-E-N-E-W-S. Don't let it, the fact that it's coming from the comptroller and the tax office make you seem like this is something you need not to listen to. This is something that you should listen to. It's really fun. It's entertaining and uh, very informative about different places. I love they end up each segment saying, hey, what's one of your favorite places in Maryland to go? And I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. I want to go there. Yeah, well, thank you also for your podcast because it pulls people together. It uh, allows everyone to realize that all is not doom and gloom, and uh, it has a, it, it has a very significant impact, I think, on the quality of life in Annapolis. So, 
Well, thank you. Well, I know, I, I know you. I know you listen to podcasts. I know that you spoke with Scott McMullen on the Annapolis podcast. Which is your favorite podcast that you listen to? And this is this I'm oh, this, this, this I'm going to use for bragging rights over Scott at the Annapolis podcast or Ryan yeah, over at a minor yeah. detail or the Conduit uh, yeah, Street. Yeah, no, I'm going to stay out of that. But uh, I do have a little bit of affection for Ryan Minor because um, you know I've been out to his grandfather's house here in Western Maryland. I haven't been to your house before, so invite me and I'll come over and try to get you in the top three. Bring the beer. Bring the beer yeah. and you can come. Well, if you if you put a cold beer out on your doorstep, I'll show up. <laughs> so you've got that well tuned of a nose, right? Yeah. <laughs> For more information, MarylandTaxes.gov is where you want to go. And that's you know that you can find out about tax free week. You can find out about the unclaimed property. You can um, find out about pretty much everything financial with Maryland. Where do we go if we want to find out about um, your run for governor? Do you have a website set up for that yet? Oh, uh, yeah. Franchot.com. My last name, dot com. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff there. And But, you know, most of it's uh, politics and things like that. It's important, but it's very secondary right now because of the virus. And then the national elections are coming up in November, so I encourage everybody to uh, participate there. And then after that, may, maybe uh, next year, early next year, I can come back in the podcast and we can talk about what we can do together to make Maryland a really cool and much more cool state than it even is right now. Well, you are always, always welcome. It is a pleasure to have you here all the time. And if the stars align and COVID is under control and you're sitting in the governor's mansion in a couple of years in 2023, can I talk you into doing a podcast from the man cave in the basement of the governor's mansion? That is absolute done deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fan. That's great. I, I would look forward to that, obviously. But, uh, you know, my best to your listeners. And if they need uh, me in any way, uh, we, uh, we're we serious about this uh, customer service. We're, we're here to be of service to everybody. I don't care who you are. Uh, we are not the IRS. We're not interested in getting blood from a stone. We're the Maryland Comptroller's Office. I'm an elected official. And, uh, you know, we're trying to be of service. Fantastic. I can't ask for anything more. Maryland Comptroller Peter Francho, thank you very much for your time this morning. Stay safe, stay COVID free, stay tropical storm free, and we will talk soon. Thank you very much. All the best. This has been an update from Eye on Annapolis. Please visit us at ionanapolis.net. Follow us on Twitter at ionanapolis. And be sure to subscribe to our daily news brief podcast, which is delivered every Monday through Friday to your phone or device at 7 a.m.